So good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darren Yeo, and I'm uh, an undergraduate student at the National University of Singapore. I did my honors thesis on the morphology and ecology of Singapore's automated limbs at the Evolutionary Biology Lab and supervised by Professor Rudolf Meyer, and together with my co-author and colleague, uh, Ms. Jayati Pinyamuti. So uh, today I'll talk to you about uh, my project. So the ordinata I ordered that comprises both dragonflies and damselflies. And many researchers are interested in this group for a variety of reasons. The adults are colorful, attractive, and charismatic, and hence have much conservation interest and value as flagship species for habitat preservation. The names for Drabber in comparison are key predators in many freshwater ecosystems. They have been used uh, to control pest popula uh, populations of pest species, as well as bioindicators for water quality. So, uh, ornates are generally considered quite desirable taxa, and hence are a component of Singapore's City Biodiversity Index. So we know that there are 119 excellent species in Singapore as of 2010 from a photographic guide by Tang et al. And there have been several new discoveries since. We also know that, uh, that a park survey has been conducted uh, for ordinates by Robin Young from M Parks and Davidson in 2011. However, both these publications are only based on adult sightings. As for the more inconspicuous nymphs, only seven species have been described in Singapore, and most of these are rare species or new records. As such, the majority of Singapore's organic names remain unidentifiable, and there's a severe lack of uh, information on their basic biology, ecology, and natural history. So my project aims to rectify this by matching the nymphal stages to the adults in order to create an identification tool for the nymphs based on their morphology. Life history stage matching is usually done by rearing the nymphs to adulthood, allowing them to emerge and then identifying the adult. However, this process is time consuming and often has low success rates due to nymph mortality as well as uh, unsuitable conditions for emergence. DNA barcoding, however, presents a much faster alternative. By sequencing a short genetic marker, usually a mitochondrial gene sequence, we are able to match the nymphal and adult stages of the same species based on how similar their, gen their genetic sequences are. So after we did that, as of today, we have 66 species of ordinates barcoded, meaning we have the genetic marker in our databases. And that most of these, or most of the common and uncommon species, have been uh, barcoded. But more importantly, we have matched 33 names to uh, the adults, and these names are now identifiable based on their morphology. However, this number is still pretty low compared to the uh, total of 69, as we have insufficient name specimens. So in order to increase the number of matches, we need to increase our sampling effort and collect more names from different habitats. This highlights the importance of collaborators who might chance upon some yet unidentified nymph. In fact, most of the nymph and adult specimens from this uh, project were contributed by the following people from the fo uh, following organizations. Without their efforts and contributions, this project wouldn't be where it is today. Okay, so once we've uh, once we've matched the names, we photograph them using a high-res ima uh, imaging system from various angles for the identification tool. The collage you see here uh, depicts 32 of the uh, ordinate species, as well as the corresponding name on the right uh, of the species that were matched in this uh, project. After that, we created a digital reference collection with the help of Dr. Ang Chen from the Evolutionary Biology Lab as an identification tool for whoever might need this resource. So, let me just show you the website. It looks something like this. Here, the website showcases the 33 species of ordinate names that we have matched so far, and will be continually updated as small uh, matches are made. So, little bit it's most of uh, diverse. <coughs> And if you click into a particular uh, species, oh, it's weird. Yeah, you 
be able to view a uh, high-risk image of the name. However, the formatting is a bit strange here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a zoomify function which allows you to uh, zoom into particular characteristics. Uh, yeah, it's actually much bigger. Sorry. Uh, yeah, but on the and on the right, uh, the panel on the right, there's information on the species as well as the specimen. There's also a species comparison tool. Yeah, where you are able to compare this, uh, the names from different species. Side by side. Okay. So, now that you are able to identify the names to species, we can explore further aspects of their biology and ecology. For my project, I looked at two things, their habitat preference as well as their diet. For the habitat preference study, our aim was to identify habitat variables that were conducive for alternate names in order uh, to inform bioremediation efforts as well as conservation strategies. Using uh, specimens and data from a freshwater pond microinvertebrate survey conducted by the Tropical Marine Science Institute in 2011, I identified the names to species and conducted a multiple regression analysis using habitat characteristics and physiochemical data as uh, independent variables and the name diversity and abundance as dependent variables. However, I won't be elaborating uh, further on this section due to the lack of time. Instead, I will uh, dwell more on the dietary analysis portion. So for the diet assessment study, we had two goals. One was to find out what they were eating and secondly, we wanted to evaluate this new technique for diet analysis known as meta barcoding. So there is a video here. Yeah, so this is a typical alternate name. They're known, as for, they're known for being voracious generalist predators and understanding the diet can help us understand the trophic uh, interactions in a particular ecosystem as well as evaluate their potential as uh, biological pest control agents. So, but what exactly is metabar coding? It is essentially the mass sequencing of a short genetic marker found in the gut or fecal samples of a particular organism to find out what this organism has been feeding on. This requires the use of next generation sequencing technology and the direct uh, sequences generated from, from the sequencing will be compared against databases to obtain the diet identities. So for this project, I sampled over a period of three months <laughs> uh, I collected about 114 names uh, from eight different species and extracted the gut DNA using phenochloroform. I then amplified a short uh, CO1 fragment from the samples using PCR and applicons were tagged using a unique primer tag combination at both ends so I was able to trace the sequences back to the whole specimen. We then passed the samples to Illumina for next generation sequencing and they returned us 11 million reads. However, most of these uh, sequences are host DNA and after removing and filtering this, we're left with about 186,000 left to characterize the diet. The diet reads were then sorted to host specimen by the aforementioned uh, parametric combination system. We then compared the sequences to uh, three different databases, NCBI GenBank, BOLT and local databases to obtain the diet identities. And this is what we found, that uh, the ordinates names we sampled were feeding on. The tadpoles, uh, midge, mosquito, fly larvae, beetles, bugs, copepods, ostracots, and worms. But uh, the taxa of interest would probably be the uh, midge and mosquito larvae, where most uh, pest species belong to. And this slide shows the uh, three items for the different host species. Spices, fructuans, toilet. And as you can see uh, here, one, two, three, four, five. These are uh, midge larvae, and these feature very prominently in the alternate name diet. 
these are rare species, Prunens, Ramradis, and, and yet I'm actually quite limited. However, I, was only, I only managed to find uh, one specimen per species for these limbs, and so the, uh, the diet analysis is still in its preliminary stages. So we know that rich larvae are the most common dietary element for the ordinate limbs based on the frequency of occurrence in samples, as well as the total number of reads. We also, uh, by measuring the size of the ordinate limbs, we also found that there's no lower size limit of prey, and the ordinate limbs simply increase their diet range to include larger species as they grow bigger. We also found that there are both uh, midge and mosquito larvae in, in the diet, which uh, highlights their potential as uh, biological pest control agents. As for metabolic coding, it's a fast and powerful method for looking at the diet of species with, for which we have no prior information as well as investigating trophic relationships in the natural environment instead of an artificial lab one. Metabar coding can also detect prey with uh, no bony or skeletalized parts, such as worms and tadpoles, and can obtain rather precise diet identities depending on the quality of the reference database. Right. So in conclusion, we are now able to identify 33 ordinate named species and have developed a pipeline and a sequence database for more uh, Names to be matched once we have obtained new name specimens. We found that uh, rich larvae are an important part of ordinate diet, and that metabar coding is a powerful tool for diet analysis that researchers might want to consider using. However, one should be aware of the technical and bioinformatic limitations to this technique. Okay, and before I'd like to end my talk, I would like to thank the following people who have made this project possible. My supervisor, Professor Rudolf Meyer, uh, my co-author and uh, colleague, Ms. Jayanti Pramoti, Dr. Ang Chen and Ms. Amrita Shkasan from the NUS Evolutionary Biology Lab, Mr. Robin Yang from M-Parks, Dr. Esther Clues, and Mr. Adam Quack from TMSI, and lastly, Dr. Jeffrey Quick from NUS Freshwater Innovation Biology Lab. That's all. I come to end my talk. Thank you for your time. <laughs>